Hello, welcome back to the channel. Recently, I had an opportunity to go camping at Bryce Canyon National Park in southern Utah. Uh, we went down with some friends. We reserved a spot in the Bryce Canyon camp area where there wasn't any hookups. And this was a great opportunity to try out my solar panel and my lithium battery and, and all the upgrades that I made recently. In this photo, you can see my uh, solar panel that I have out front. That is a Renogy 200 watt uh, portable solar panel. My reflection fifth wheel has a 165 watts on the roof. So this will be a real true, real world test of being completely off the grid. Well, my one doesn't completely off the grid. I did have cellular service. I like to have my coffee in the morning. So to, in order to do that, I had to have an inverter. Well, that, that really puts everything to the test. Running the inverter, making coffee, watching TV. I have a portable refrigerator that I put all my drinks in so I don't have to pack a lot of ice. Uh, that little refrigerator runs on 12 volt. My refrigerator and my travel trailer, 12 volt also. That's using a lot of power. Our camp is going to be five days in Bryce Canyon. I am starting out with a full charge battery and then I will just kind of update you. We'll just kind of go through the numbers and see how long it'll last. Beautiful day, the first day, supposed to be decent weather and then it's supposed to get continually worse to the point where our last day, maybe two days, it'll be raining and overcast. So how long can I stay off the grid without having to shut everything down or light up a generator? Now the inverter is the key to getting the 12 volt battery up to a 110 so I can run the microwave and the coffee pot and the TV and everything else that plugs into your regular 110 outlets. And then you can still run all the 12 volt. This heavy wire that runs up to the inverter actually came with the inverter. It also has a heavy ground wire that goes back to the battery. Then off to this side is where you will hook in your 110 that will run up over and mine runs up across to the automatic transfer switch. This automatically switches from your shore power to your generator or to an inverter in this case. This is where the magic happens. That wire that has the loop that Grand Design provides is the inverter loop. You got a wire coming from the breaker and then you've got that wire going back to the breaker. So you've got your shore power coming in and then that is automatically switched to the inverter and then you've got your new power going back to the breaker so that each time whether you got shore power or whether you got inverter power you've got that breaker set up to power all your 110 for microwave and the like when it comes to your outlets pretty cool how this automatically switches now let's look at the solar charge controller how this has been set up now you'll see as as at the bottom of the controller, you can see the wires going into the bottom of the controller. Well, those wires were just constant power. Whenever there was sun, there was power. So I decided to break that power by putting in this breaker box. Uh, the breaker box is DC, so it can Y out of the top. You see the two wires coming out of the top, or the two sets. Uh, one is going to the roof solar panel and the other one is going through the wall and then it comes out the other side of the wall into my storage bin and then I can run that extra wire. It's about 25 feet to my portable solar panel and then I can move that portable panel around chasing the sun because when I'm in a forest area like this there was a lot of shadows and I kept losing power on the roof but I could keep chasing it with my portable. Okay, now let's look at the battery end. The uh, lithium battery that I purchased is a 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery. The original wires uh, for the power are adequate, but the ground wire is no longer adequate. The ground wire to the inverter 
goes to the right side of the shunt and then you can see I added a second wire from the shunt in order to carry that load. I want to run the ground through the shunt so that I'll be able to monitor what is going on when it comes to battery usage and voltage and amps and all of that side of it. Okay, so my first 24 hours after watching a little TV, got a little cold at night, ran the heater a few times, got up, made coffee, ran two refrigerators, my power dropped down to 56% battery life. And my voltage at 56%, because it's lithium, I'm at 13.28 volts. And as the sun started to shine and I got good coverage on the solar panel, I went from right around 11 amps of charge to 14 amps of charge and as high as 18 amps of charge. And if you convert that 18 amps to watts, my solar panel is running about 50% charge at full sun. So if I need 100 amps divided by 18.25 amp hours, at the full sun, it will take me five and a half hours to completely charge my battery. Well, I didn't have five and a half hours with the shadows from the trees and a few little clouds that moved by. So I only got 83.4% charge by the end of the night. So since we're starting out with only 85% battery on our second day, I knew I had to be more conservative. I unplugged the second refrigerator. Uh, we didn't watch TV. I didn't use the coffee pot or the microwave, so we just tried to be as conservative as possible and mainly just run the heater at night and the refrigerator during the day. And yes, we can turn the refrigerator off at night because it was plenty cold enough. Um, and then on our last day, it rained and it got pretty heavy clouds, so I got up at six o'clock in the morning and the battery had shut off. Once I got the solar panel going, I was able to get enough charge to be able to tell where the battery actually was. So it looks like the built-in battery monitor shuts off at about 11 volts. I thought it would go down to about 10, but 11 kind of makes sense. I don't really know what the stats are. I couldn't find it in their manual. And it dropped down to, to just under 32% battery. Uh, it climbed up. It's pretty good. I was able to get the refrigerator running uh, at that voltage, and I had just enough sun intermittent <laughs> in the clouds to be able to get everything back where it needed. And then since we were leaving that day, I needed enough power to pull in the slide and the leveling system. It was just a matter of hooking up my truck while the truck was running and then I was able to get the voltage up high enough that everything worked okay. But the battery monitor system and the battery was able to get it up to 12 volts rather quickly. So that was plenty enough power to be able to move on to our next site. So what did I learn from all this? <laughs> At 365 watts of solar panel and 200 amp hour battery, if I've got really good sun, I can take advantage of the inverter, I can make some popcorn in the microwave, watch a movie, and have a nice hot cup of coffee in the morning. But if the weather turns, probably better bring a generator. I can last one or two days with really foul weather, but uh, that's about it. But in the end, man, what a wonderful trip. Bryce Canyon is fantastic. Uh, great hikes, hours and hours and hours of hiking. We wore ourselves out. Just really a great area. If you haven't seen it, you got to do it. All right, well, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Or mostly listening. Not a whole lot to watch on this one. <laughs> Not one of my usual videos. But anyway, it was a lot of good information. I, I hope it uh, helps anybody else out when they're thinking about a, a uh, lithium battery and 
solar panels and how long is it going to last and how does that all work? So hopefully it helps. Thanks again. Goodbye for now.